Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. So in New York City, I created a platform called Video Music Box. Diddy wanted to play the role of, of uh, Bishop, which is Tupac. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Welcome to season two of the Real Talk Session. I'm your host, Taryn Morgan. Now, this season, doing a little different, you know, stepping our game up a lot. Um, last year, recorded 15 episodes in about 18 weeks, and let me say, that was stressful as hell. So, we're doing a little bit different. Of course, we had to start season two off big, and I had the honor of meeting and interviewing one of the people that I look up to, Uncle Ralph McDaniels. One of the goals of the Real Talk Session series is to break the stigma surrounding mental health, especially within black communities. Just a little backstory about this interview. Um, I attended the event this past summer and I had an opportunity to meet and connect with them. This interview was done on a day where my mental health was in the gutters. I didn't want to come out of the bed. I was contemplating on canceling the interview, but some opportunities only come once in a lifetime. So I had to take it by the neck and just conquer the day. Uh, so please excuse any jumbling of the words, the crooked hat. It was just a hot mess for me. But we made it through and we made it happen. Thank you for your support and tuning in and we hope you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Uncle Ralph McDaniels. We are back with season two. And of course, I had to start it off extra strong. I have a legend here. Hip hop would not be what it is today. And I'm confident in saying that without this man. So without further ado, Uncle Ralph, Mr. McDaniels, I call him, but Ralph McDaniels. What's How you up, doing, what's sir? up? All good, man. Uncle Ralph is cool. That's fine, man. I Thanks appreciate for having it. me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was ready for manner, so, you know, I got to make sure <laughs> I put some respect in your name, definitely. <laughs> so I know your legacy. A lot of the younger people don't know your legacy. Yeah. So can you break down who exactly you are because they don't understand the magnitude of you? Well, I mean, in the 80s, we didn't have social media. We didn't have ways to get music out and music videos and interviews and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So in New York City, I created a platform called Video Music Box. And basically, that was where new artists could come, established artists could come, and we could talk about, you know, their, their product, their music, play then music videos, um, actors, you know, I remember, you know, like having Lawrence Fishburne on my show, like mm. a young Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. you know, and um, J-Lo mm. and all these different people who are, you know, just trying to, you know, get established at that time mm -hmm. and that were coming into New York City. So the show came on um, every day from nine, I mean, from 3.30 to 4.30. And um, and people look forward to seeing it because that's how they got their urban, you know, information. Yeah. And one thing that I'm sure a lot of people don't realize that you were playing hip hop music way before BET, before MTV, 1983. That's when you started. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that was happening in New York and, and not just in New York, a, a lot of places around the country is that, um, you know, people in D.C. area had BET because that was established in that area. Yeah. But the rest of the country didn't have it yet. It wasn't on cable yet. Cable didn't really exist mm -hmm. then. Um, so we came before cable. <laughs> and, you know, you could just turn on your TV and it was there. You know, it just came in. You know, now people don't even watch TV. They don't even want to have cable. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, that's, you know, that's how you know, accessible we were at that particular time. Mm. So MTV was basically playing, you know, rock and roll and, you know, dance music and stuff like that. They really hadn't touched on um, hip hop yet. Okay. So they didn't touch on hip hop too, like maybe five years after us. Okay. So I read like a little bit about your bio and it said that you worked at a public access ready uh, TV. TV station. So that's how you got in. So what really inspired the idea of Video Music Box? Because that was something brand new that no one else was doing. So you had no blueprint at all. Yeah, I mean, it was by mistake. You know, we were, uh, I was working as an engineer at this TV station, um, WNYC, um, Channel 31. And um, and all of a sudden, these tapes came in one day. My boy was editing, and he said, check this out. And he, he showed me some tapes of some artists performing in, like, a studio. It wasn't really a music video, like, where you have, you know, concept and stuff like that. It was them performing in a studio with three cameras and and it was like i was like what's this and he was yeah. like i don't know well, you know 
And basically back then, the record companies would send out tapes to artists, to, to uh, TV stations, radio stations, just to show you what the artists look like. Uh-huh. Mind you, this is before the internet. Yeah, exactly. So we didn't have access. You know, you could look at a photo of them, or if they were on TV, you saw them. But if they were new, you didn't know. Yeah, you, you got know, no personality. If they weren't, you know, in your area. Yeah. So this is what it was. They were sending these things out, and I was like, we should put together a show that shows these this stuff on TV. Mm. That's not what they were made for. They were just for publicity purposes to show, you know, you know, a producer or somebody who books a show. Yeah. And. I, I said, nah, let's let's put it on TV. And the people who sent them to me were like, that's not what it's for. I'm like, yeah. well, why not? You spent all this money on doing it. Why don't we just play it, get more out of it? And they realized that they could do something more with what they were sending me. Yeah. Yeah. That was a revolutionary idea. And oftentimes people get afraid to get out of the comfort zone and try something new. They don't want to go with the flow. So, like, what really inspired you? Did you have anyone that you looked up to at the time? Because I know particularly for me, I learned my style of video from you, Hits in the Streets, my interviewing stuff from Angie Martinez, uh, a little bit of Jeff Johnson. So who inspired you to do what you did? I think for me it was, you know, watching um, Soul Train, Don Cornelius as a kid. Yes. You know, Don Cornelius was the godfather. You know, he was like, you know, he had all the groups on. He had political messages that he was uh, addressing. He had, you know, actors. He had all whoever was hot. In our hood, uh-huh. entertainment-wise, he had them on there, you know, on a national basis. Plus, you could see all the cool new dances and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it was our moment, you know, and I wanted to be um, continue in that in that legacy. So you're known for your legacy, but, of course, with anybody else that got to the top, there were struggle stories with that. So let's go through a little bit of that. So when you first started, what were some of your weaknesses and how did you address those issues? My first weakness is I never produced a TV show. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't know anything about it. Well, I shouldn't say I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I worked on the technical side of it, so I didn't know okay. that much about it. So, um, but, you know, what it took to, you know, create a treatment and all that kind of stuff, I didn't, I didn't, I've never done that. You know, I could tell, set up lights and, you know, and cameras and all kinds of stuff like that. That wasn't a problem. But, you know, that's part of it. So that wasn't that 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 was at least 60 percent of it is knowing how to technically do it. OK, so that helped out. Um, I think the main thing for for me was that and you you kind of mentioned this was it didn't exist what I did. So people usually base something if they're going to green light something on something that exists already. Mm-hmm. And if they it doesn't exist, they really don't know what to do. Yeah. They don't, they go, well, I don't, I've never seen anything like this in what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And so you, we have to then go, okay, um, you know, where are we going to get an example of this from? Yeah. So I can prove to them that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with it. And so when I first brought up the idea of Video Music Box, nobody was really with it or it took a while. And then this show came on TV called New York Hot Tracks, which was basically want my idea okay but i had you know i hadn't you know i never saw it on tv or finally i saw it and i was like that's what i want to do it's right there that's it okay and so i was able to take it to then the program director there and say that's what we want to do this show just started just now yeah but we had been talking about this you know prior to the show coming on tv and they were like yeah okay all right now i get it and i understand you know and and that's how we got started now it was a matter of you know bringing on guests not everybody understood it because it didn't exist. Even yeah. with hot tracks, it was new. Um, you know, my friend was Russell Simmons. He had all the hot hip hop artists at the time, mm. and I was like, "Yeah, I want to bring a video camera." He was like, "A video camera for what?" You know, he didn't understand that. You know, at what time? You know, at a video show. You have a show. What is that? Yeah. And he, he, because he just didn't know. You know, he knew of. You know, you went to the to get your artists on the news, ABC News or NBC or CBS. Yeah you know, to get an interview and you get publicity out of it. Uh But this was a show that was going to be just about entertainment. It didn't exist. Yeah. So he was like, okay, whatever, whatever you want to do, because he knew me. But probably if he didn't know me, he probably would have been like, nah, we ain't with it. Exactly. You know, so. Okay. And that's definitely dope. And I appreciated that. Like you even gave me that helping hand to get this interview with you because oftentimes 
I see that it's all about network and who you know. I saw you post an event. I saw the opportunity. I presented myself, and yeah. I said you always have to prepare no matter what. So I do want to thank you for that. Um, nah, man. Definitely. This is, you know, you're going to do the same for somebody else. Yeah, exactly. I saw yeah. I'm playing for it, definitely. Yeah. So you've been doing this for 36 years. Yeah. What are your top three moments or favorite memories of Video Music Box? Um, number one would probably be Fresh Fest okay. in 1985. Video Music Box's coverage of Fresh Fest 2 started at a press conference featuring Run DMC and Houdini. It was the first... Two years before me. <laughs> yeah, two two years. Yeah, it was it was um, the first hip hop um, tour that mm -hmm. went out, um, and it was the New York leg of it, and, and we we got to shoot the whole thing, um, which was incredible. It was Run DMC, Houdini, Fat Boys, LL Cool J, uh, Grandmaster Flash, mm -hmm. uh, the Furious Five. And, you know, it was all of the hot hip hop acts at that particular moment. And what thing was cool about that was that you got to see how diverse hip-hop was. Yeah. You know, because if you were from the Bronx or you were from South Jamaica or wherever you were, you know, you just knew your area that was into it. Mm -hmm. Now you saw white kids from the suburbs, you know, Asian kids from, you know, from Flushing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it was like, oh, you 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 into this too? And you could tell by, the, you know, they swag that they was into it too. Yeah. You know, so you were like, oh, I didn't know that. We I, Oh, we all like this. Oh, so it, you realize that, Hip hop had no color on it. It was just us who yeah. liked it. You know, it was just yeah, the exactly. people who liked hip hop. You know, um, which was cool about about Fresh Fest. Um, Fresh Fest. Um, I would say uh, Nas um, album release party. This is my man, the rapper Nas, Nasty what Nas. Queens, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, uh, that's one of my Illmatic, favorite artists, right? Illmatic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Watch that video yeah. every day. Um, that was always cool. I think that, um, and I, I've never really mentioned this because, it, but you know, it came from the ground up. Um, Black Moon, um, um, into the stage. That, 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 I mean, that whole movement really started on Video Music Box, which then, yeah. you know, came Duck Down and then came, you know, um, all of the different labels that were associated with them and Smith and & Wesson and, you know, um, Fab Five and, you know, all of these groups. But it started right here on Video Music Box. Chuck Chillout, who was a friend of mine, so this is a friend of mine, came to me and said, yo, I got this this this, this group called Black Moon. Can you do the video? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. Let's, you know, send me the music, Chuck. Sent me the music. And, you know, that was uh, who got the props. <laughs> And I was like, this is dope. And he said, oh, you can't use this version. You got to do another. I have another version of it that's different than the one you hear. The, the one that eventually came out because it was a sample in there that didn't get cleared. Okay. So they sent me the, the version. I said, look, I'm shooting a video on Friday with Roxanne Shante. It was for the song Roxanne Shante was doing called Live on Stage. Meet me after we finish that video on 14th Street in yeah. the meatpacking district, which is not nothing. It was a real meatpacking district then. It was really meat hanging. Uh -huh. <laughs> now it's just a name, meatpacking district. Yeah. And um, and we went down there and we shot their video in about two three hours for who got the props and and they they ran. They just they, you know pe some people say that's the beginning of backpack rap. You know I don't think that that's what they wanted, but yeah. that's what people say. Yeah, and I remember Black Moon definitely. Like I was a kid, and my uncle Derek, shout out to my uncle Derek, uh, he was always playing Black Moon, uh, Far Side, all those old artists. So like yeah. I was brought up on hip hop. Like my first video that I remember was Scenario with yeah. that crazy like the uh, the video effects and whatnot on there. Like, yeah, it was dope. that was literally um, right off of the um, I forget, can't remember the program that they used, um, editing program. But that's what they did. They just took the interface of the ed editing program and made. And plugged in all of the artists that are on scenario. Yeah, and that was a dope thing to me because I'm like, I never saw no, anything like that. Yeah. yeah, it was dope. And it like, dope. that's one of the things that really yeah. sparked my interest in yeah. video ever since then. And then when I was old enough to hear about, they used to call it the box. I'm from Jersey, but necessarily I remember they calling it the box in New York. So just doing my own research as I got older, and it was definitely something that was dope and I admired. So you have over 400 videos under your credits. So that's like, yeah. you did Cream. 
Wu Tang. Yeah, I did Cream. Um, Nas. It ain't hard to tell. Um, you know, shoot, we I've done a, a bunch of stuff, half the stuff. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, there. You got but, a great legacy. You know, um, our company, my partner. Well, in the early days of video music, I be Ralph McDaniel's in the Vid Kid. Yeah, and that was my childhood friend, my man Lionel, and um, and we started um a production company. Okay. First, we started working on we on Video Music Box. Then we went to um because we were like we we want to create the videos. Yeah. Because we didn't like the videos that we we saw. Uh-huh. And so we were like, well, we should start a company and started this company called Classic Concept Productions. And we did, you know, our first videos were like Roxanne Shante, uh, um, Roxanne's Revenge, um, some freestyle videos with this girl named Naomi. Um, I mean, this was early, then that was early freestyle for, you know, for people that like Lisa Lisa and J Lo. I mean, not, well, J Lo's not freestyle, but yeah. anyway, you know, it was early, you know, and. We then got to a point where we met up with Cold Chillin' Records, and that was like the golden era of hip hop for, for the eighty late for the eighties, and we did Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marquee, Coogee Rap, um, MC Shan, all of their videos for that yeah. particular label, and um, and then we started spreading out and doing different things for different other labels, um, you know we did all of Bell Biv DeVoe's first videos, the Poison mm-hmm. and all that stuff, um, all of Boys to Men. Cause that was affiliated with BBD, um, um, so End of the Road, all that stuff we did, TLC's first album, um, because of they liked what we did with Boys yeah. to Men. And so it, you know, people saw a body of work that you did, and then they'd be like, "Yo, can you do what you did for for Boys to Men? Can you do what yeah. you did for TLC? Can you do that for us now?" And and we just you know just continued to keep on working. So and, they saw the quality of work that yeah, you're doing, yeah. and definitely the quantity of it. Yeah, so, I mean, well, you know, they knew that we were going to get it done. You yeah. know, that's the key. You know, it's like people, n- when you work in this in the industry, it has to be done in a certain amount of time. Yeah. You know, like sometimes when you're independent, you know, you can, you know, we got three months or whatever. But when it comes to the industry, we need it next week. Yeah. You know, can you do it? And we're like, yeah, we can do it. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much you presented the challenge and you conquered it repeatedly. So that's how you got the reputation of yeah. okay, we're gonna go and come to Uncle Ralph for these interview uh, for the we music know we videos. can get because they know you're gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it comes down to because people just want to know that they're gonna get it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so now, <I> like, <laughs> so then uh, you you dipped your toes into movies too. So you're a producer for Juice. So like that's a cult cult classic anywhere cult you classic. go in the hood, definitely. So like, what was one of your favorite mo- uh, memories from Juice doing that? Um, I think the first thing for me with Juice was that they didn't have, you know, they were a Hollywood company, came in, the producers, um, and they weren't, they, they said, we want to shoot this hip-hop movie, and prior to that, there were a lot of people getting ripped off with movies and things like that, and people weren't really feeling that Hollywood thing in New yeah. York, like, we ain't, we ain't going Hollywood, we hip-hop. Yeah, not for you. And um, so they didn't get the response that they thought they were going to get when they touched down. Mm. And uh, a friend of mine um, who worked on the set, on worked on the team with them, said, you need to get Ralph in here because he's going to, if he puts the word out, everybody will come. Yeah, exactly. So she called me up. She said, Ralph, can you help them out? I said, what am I doing? She's like, you're a consultant. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be a consultant. Give me a title. So it was like associate producer slash consultant. I called up all the people that I knew, said, this is a legit. Go down to the office. Yeah. They need you. They signing people up. You, they, they, everybody's getting SAG cards. You know, it's real. And so, Queen Latifah signed up. Um, she bought Tretch. Um, the Bomb Squad did the whole soundtrack, which did all the Public Enemy stuff. You know, all these people started showing up that they really wanted. And and the funny thing about that is that the only person they had casted was Tupac, and they wanted, um, you know, to get the rest of the cast. So Omar Epps is in it, Kareem, um, all, the, all the guys that play the main characters. So, like, about a week or two late into it, Diddy wanted to play the role of, of uh, Bishop, yeah. which is Tupac. He and was, at that time, he didn't act at all. No, he didn't act, but he felt like it was his story when he, he saw the script. He read, he had, somebody had given him the script. Gotcha. And he was like, he's from, you know, Harlem kid, you know, originally Mount Vernon, but lived in Harlem. And he's like, that's me. You know, I can do that. I said, that's the only role that they definitely have casted already. Yeah. Is, and it was for two. I said, man, I'm telling you, this is it. I can do it. And, and you know, and I said, 
I don't know because that's the one, the only person that when I walked in the door they had was Pac. Yeah. You know, and so it didn't work out. Of course, quite obviously, Pac was one <laughs> got the got the role, but you know, Diddy was inspiring to get that that role as well. Okay, yeah. that's definitely dope. Yeah. And for that, did, what other films did you did? You had an involvement with the Wu Tang documentary also. Um, well, recently, the... yeah, we uh, we have the Wu Tang documentary that's on Showtime, four parts. Um, Check it out if you haven't. It's definitely yeah, it's crazy. Of, of Mike's and Men, um, dope. Um, Roxanne, Roxanne, the movie. That's on Netflix also. That's on Netflix. Okay. Um, that's with um, uh, Mimi Valdez, executive producer. And um, Pharrell and um, and um, some other folks, and um, so I'm a producer on that. And um, but plenty of documentaries. You know, there's a couple of other ones. One's coming out that Quest Love is working on, that I helped him out. It's just about finished now. Okay. Um, Hip Hop Evolution. I, I work with them on on that's also a Netflix production. Um, you name it. Any of those documentaries, I have something yeah. to do with it. Yeah. And you're still one of the biggest pioneers when it comes to video in general, like for documentation purposes, because like they get a lot of stuff from you. Yeah, yeah, because we, you know, and that was my whole thing when I first started this. And for anybody that's, you know, starting something now is that I want it to be, you know, definitive. Yeah. You know, for this genre and the visuals, at least of it, you know. Um, some people have great audio recordings, but I wanted to have great video recordings mm -hmm. of things that the best I could for that particular moment, you know, at the first, you know, first Wu-Tang, first Nas, first Jay-Z, first Big, yeah. you know, and and be able to create this content that, you know, you can do. And, 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 and anybody can do it, you know, it just your phone has the best content. You know, I tell people I now. my phone right now, 4K. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's and power. just, you know, don't, you know, what happens is we get a new phone, we forget about it, and but there's incredible content. Yeah. Don't don't just throw it away, you know. And this is just the average Joe that's out there because you never know what that could be and how important that is to culture. Yeah, and that's one thing, like, you influenced my style with that because everyone in college can tell you I had the camera walking around recording every single thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, those are things you can look back at it and you never know when it could be something bigger, like, oh, I got something here, you know. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's like that, you know. There's, there, there are, you know, when I first started doing video music about, you know, maybe there were two or three other shows. Yeah. And, um... Then it became like 50 shows. Then it was like 100 shows. Yeah. And I was like, everybody got a camera, you know. Like, yeah. But because the price of technology became affordable, that's why people started getting it. Now, it's super affordable. You don't have to, you don't have to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's right here on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing I saw on Mike's and Man, you had a room full of tapes. Yeah. How many tapes do you think you own? We have at least 20,000 hours worth of content. <sighs> Um, you that's know, since 83 yeah that's since 83 started. so that's 36 years worth of stuff um, and we're constantly digitizing everything is not digitized it's like 36 years I, I, I would have been having time. to do it in real time yeah. from back then yeah, exactly um, that's an important part of what we do now is the, is the digitizing and, and, um, and, and making sure that everything's cataloged the right way um, because you know it's you know it's, it's, it's important to I want young people to see it yeah and make their own decisions on it, you know, what they think, you know, if they like, you know, maybe they like the style of the artist, maybe they like the clothing. Yeah. There's so many things that you can get out of looking at a picture. Exactly. And so if the, I want it to be accessible so young people can see it. Yeah, definitely. And especially in the schools, they don't highlight the achievements that African Americans or black people have done. And what you've done has highlighted all that. And that's important. American history, not just hip hop history, but American history. Definitely. Absolutely. So kudos to you and salute to you because you're inspiring a lot of people, including myself. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So going more so on today, what's some stuff that you're doing? Um, I know that I met you through the event you do through that was amazing at the Queens Library. And this is all about empowering, empowering the formerly incarcerated. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know, this affects our community in every way. And every, if we can better it, 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 it betters our community in a major way. So that's what this is all about, and making sure that you know we give real resources. The game is getting real tight now, and it's not really much a lot of room for people to, to get into this. As you really have to have, a, you really have to stand out. You know what I mean? In my in my in my game, to to make your mark. You know what I mean? And and that's pretty much it. And if that's not your calling, then find where you fit in, and just keep it moving like that. So, like, what are some other things that you're doing currently? In 2019, we're doing, um, you know, Queens Library, which is super important. The reason why I came to Queens Library was because 
um, they have uh, 65 branches in Queens. So in every community just about in Queens area, there's a library. Mm -hmm. And so we can spread hip hop through each one of those communities. I mean, it's there already, but we can set up, you know, uh, a place where hip hoppers can come yeah. and do whatever they want to do. And so that's important to me because we learn a lot, at least in Queens, we've learned a lot about every community. You know, it's like large professor from main source, great mm -hmm. producer, worked found Nas, um, Akinelli, all these guys. And he's from Flushing, Queens. Yeah. And um, and so we got to learn a little bit about what it was, him growing up and what Flushing looked like. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, um, the Jamaica, Queens, 50 Cent, you know, yeah. 40 Projects, you know, um, learn a lot about them, what he was seeing and other people that influenced him. So all of this information now I'm bringing into the library. So that the library can have a, um, an archive of information okay. that people can come here and find out a little bit more about hip-hop in Queens. Okay. Any plans to bring anything to Jersey? If not, I can help you out. <laughs> nah, I mean, okay. I, I, I would say somebody should be out there doing it. Yeah. You know, because Jersey has a, 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 a crazy legacy, yeah. you know, when it comes to hip-hop. You know, when I first met Naughty by Nature, it was at a graduation for, like, uh, East Orange High School at yeah. Club 88. And, you know, and they, they weren't even really out yet. The maybe uh -huh. you know, OPP had just come out, yeah. but the kids all knew them because they did all the schools. Yeah, you know that's how they knew Naughty by Nature. And now, thirty five or well, thirty years later, you know, one of the greatest hip hop groups ever for an, an anthem every summer. They gave us an anthem. It's crazy, you and know? it still rings. And they still yeah. and they're on tour now. You know, with Salt and Pepper and New Kids on the Block. So and filling arenas. So it's the you know. The, okay. Their legacy is incredible. Yeah, definitely. So we got to bring something to Jersey, though. I'll help you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So we are uh, beginning to wrap up. So what is some advice that you would give to a young, aspiring entrepreneur or anyone that's trying to get into this field of what you're doing? Um, I think the most important thing is is be organized. You know, learn how to just kind of, like, set up stuff and, mm -hmm. and then kind of fill it in and then don't try to go too fast. Yeah. Because – there's so much information and so much stuff that you get nowadays and because of the because of um internet that it could you know confuse you you Definitely. know you you know you want to take in information but sometimes that can be confusing so i would do it however you can take it don't do too much mm -hmm. you know accomplish two things accomplish another two things yeah. accomplish another two things and if it's if it's in media um create a platform for yourself i'm not necessarily a fan of um of of all of the media platforms that are out there i think youtube is a good place to start i wouldn't stay there yeah um but it's a good opportunity for someone who's new to get the word out and get their brand out and mm -hmm. then you know you gotta you know create a brand you know because that's what people are into now and people want to be and you have to be consistent yeah you know and you know and set the bar high you know and set it up you know so you can reach a certain you know i'm going to get this person or if i can't get that person somebody that's at least kind of equivalent to that person okay you know and and just just you know create content um be sincere you know my one thing i tell people when when it came to video music about it wasn't about me i never wanted to even be on tv yeah um it was about the guests and the public mm. and people saw themselves that's why they did shout outs and all that kind of stuff and they yeah. were they couldn't wait to do it. Which you were one of the originators that made shout out big, yeah. definitely. And um and so I tell people, you know, it's not about you. You're just the conduit to the people that are sitting on their living room in their in their living room on their couch or, or watching this on their phone, you know, we're just helping it come come along and, and, and producing it. I definitely appreciate you uh, allowing me to, to have this interview with you. No so problem. definitely thank you for all the jewels you dropped, definitely. All right. So can you tell the people how they can reach out to you, definitely, and where they can see Video Music Box at? Yeah, you can follow me at Video Music Box, um, all platforms. Facebook is Ralph McDaniels on Facebook. Um, Video Music Box airs on uh, Saturday nights at 12 midnight and late night Thursday nights at 2.30 a.m., on NYC TV channel 25, 22, 18, 14, whatever your cable particular channel is. And um, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Real Talk Session Series. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. 
took its peace symbols to revolutionary digitized.